Okay, here we go again in the book of Acts. <clears throat> See what God can teach us about some of this stuff going on here. I forgot what our first start was. Well, we're in five and six. Five, yeah. You know, they jumped around, didn't they, again? Yeah. <clears throat> but... <clears throat> In chapter 4... Wait a minute, I thought we were in Samuel. Hey, we are in Samuel. I said Acts, my you bad. I did say Acts. <laughs> out, of, out of a three-month habit, I said Acts. <laughs> we're in Samuel. <laughs> First Samuel. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Everybody's going to the wrong book. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> Second Samuel. First Samuel. <laughs> Right. Let's see, it's the 19th, right? Correct. First Samuel 5. Yep. You remember last week they had the battle with the Philistines and Eli's sons were killed. Okay. Like God had told him they were going to die in the same day. <laughs> what verse do we start on? We're going to start in verse 1 here in a minute. Okay. And then Eli himself died when he leaned over backwards and fell over and broke his neck. <laughs> and he was 98 years old. So the high priest is now dead. The Philistines have the ark. What's the ark? It's for God. Under the covenant. It's also the covenant of heaven. What is it? It's got the tablets in it. It's got, got the Ten box. Commandments. It's a box. It's got manna in it. It's got it's the tablets, tablets in it. Two stones. It's got Moses' staff in it. Aaron's rod. And Aaron's, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Aaron carried it. Now, where did it belong? In the temple. In the temple. It wasn't a temple yet. Well, then they need to build one. <laughs> they need to build one. <laughs> I mean, you'd think they figured that out after five hundred years, <coughs> carrying that thing around. They weren't carrying it around. They carried it around all through the desert. Mm -hmm. They settled the thing in the tabernacle at Shiloh. It's been mm -hmm. sitting there. But to have this battle with the Philistines, mm -hmm. and they decided, well, we'll just bring God with us, and we'll take the ark out to the battle. My question is, <laughs> How on earth did they get in there into the Holy of Holies inside the tabernacle and get it out? <laughs> they weren't supposed to go in there. Uh -uh. <clears throat> well, the high, was, was the high priest allowed in at that time? Once a year. Mm -hmm. well, they had to tie a rope around him. When he <laughs> That's right. They did that later in the temple. But, you know. Put these little bells down on him. Anyway, they take the ark out to the battle. Mm -hmm. And the Philistines end up with the ark. Okay? In chapter 5, Now the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it to Ebenezer at Ashdod. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it to the house of Dagon, their god, and set it by Dagon. What did they think they were going to accomplish? Well, we're trying to humiliate Their god was going to overtake the other god. I wonder. You remember what the God <coughs> Dagon looked like and all that? He's part man and part fish and come on look, I ran off a picture of it. <laughs> the above represented oh, yeah. people and that. the bottom represented the Face and the things they ate. Yeah. Now, where did where did the Philistines come from, by the way? Philistia. <laughs> well, that's right. But <laughs> <coughs> Prior to that, Iran or Iraq. <coughs> <laughs> Let's go prior to that too. Well, the theory is they came down from Asia Minor. You know, and maybe even as far as Greece and, and settled uh -huh. in the, what is today the Gaza Strip area. Uh -huh. All right? 
And they, anyway, they take the Ark of God and they put it in the house of Dagon. Now, they think Dagon is their powerful God. And they won the battle, so their God's got to be stronger than the God of Israel. Mm-hmm. When the Ashdodites arose early in the next morning, behold, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the Ark of God. So they took Dagon and set him in his place again, but then they rose early the next morning, and behold, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of God, and the head of Dagon and both his palms of his hands were cut off on the threshold, (laughs) and only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. Now, what do you think they're thinking now? (laughs) Somebody sneaked in and did it. I wonder how many of them thought that they could somehow encompass the power of the God of Israel and the God of Dagon. You know, we're going to be super powerful people. We're going to have two gods. Sounds like logical thinking. Maybe, you know, the way people thought in those days with their superstitions and whatnot. I just don't know what they were thinking, right? <clears throat> what, do, what do we put in place as our gods? Football. <laughs> you don't believe it? <laughs> Just wait till July when it all starts. Basketball, things, Wall personal Street. things. What? Wall Street. Wall Street, money, power. Power breeds. Money breeds power. We we have a tendency to put a lot of things up too much on a pedestal. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, if you set them up against the actual true God, where do, where are they going to fall? They're going to fall on the one that they fall on yes. space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. None of that is really meaningful in the long term, is it? Mm. That's hard to convince people. That, I mean, who oh, I get a kick out of the <clears throat> kings in history mm-hmm. that have huge reputations and whatnot. You know, they were real big, big deals, and they either have no mention or one word in the Word of God. Because if they don't put God first, their whole life is really meaningless. They may have been powerful people. They might be President of the United States. But if you're not putting God first in your life, you're in a world of hurt. Yes, sir. We're in a world of hurt right now in this country. (laughs) <laughs> yeah right <clears throat> so he's so Dagon's a mess <laughs> therefore neither the priest of Dagon nor all who enter Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon and Ashdod to this day <laughs> <coughs> so at the time of this writing and the, this writing could be another couple of hundred years later when this was actually written down and put together right the writings of Samuel and some other people have put together to make the books of First and Second Samuel, First and Second Chronicles, mm-hmm. right? Yes, sir. So, but anyway, so they they were not real happy about their their the power of their god Dagon at this point, right? Now the hand of the Lord was heavy on the Ashdodites, and He ravaged them and smote them with tumors, both Ashdod and its territories. The Philistines had five major cities. This is one of them. And so all the people in and around that city of Ashdod, right, are now getting these tumors, which may very well have been bubonic plague, where you get these tumors, big old tumors on your neck and whatnot. And... and the reason is you find out about the mice and stuff later, and that's how the bubonic plague was spread. And you know, <laughs> so this may may have been the disease that the Lord hammered them with. Whatever it was, God gave it to them. Mm-hmm. Where did the ark belong? Children of Israel, and specifically in the holy of holies mm-hmm. in the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. Right. 
So he's letting them know it doesn't belong here. Right. When the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is severe on us and on Dagon, our God. <laughs> They're still trying to defend their God. <coughs> <Yeah. coughs> you know, when we got our minds set on certain things, we can be awful stubborn, can't we? <laughs> it's hard to change it. <laughs> so they sent and gathered all the lords of the Philistines to them and said what shall we do with the ark of God of Israel and they said let the ark of God of Israel be brought around to Gath so they brought the ark of God of Israel around and it came about that after he had brought it around that the hand of the Lord was against the city and a very great confusion and he smote the men of the city both young and old so that tumors broke out on them. <laughs> you think somebody said get this out of here. Right? Yeah. So they sent the ark of God to Ekon. <laughs> right? And it happened that the, the ark of God came <coughs> to Ekron, and the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought the ark of God of Israel around us to kill us and our people. <laughs> the ark is not where it belongs, is it? Right. Correct. They sent, therefore, and gathered all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place that it may not kill us and our people, for there was a deadly confusion throughout the city, and the hand of God was very heavy there. And the men who did not die were smitten with tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. <laughs> if you realize that the God of Israel, simply by this box, <laughs> right, was doing this, and they... They obviously realized that was the cause, right? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you change your allegiance? You don't want to give up the stuff that you like. People are very selfish. I mean, it's like saying, who wouldn't want to be worth $10.8 billion? All those people that, that say no, I wouldn't want to do that. You liars. No. <laughs> They used to My say dad used to have a phrase start call. people, huh? but I can't start say call. it here. Dumb head. That's why they didn't change it. <laughs> We're not going to change it. I was in the military, man. You say it, and I had a thing. I'm afraid of me. Well, it just strikes me, you know, how stubborn we are. Mm -hmm. You know, right? <clears throat> when you present the gospel to somebody, as simple as it is, as profound as it is, and people are like, no, I want to stay in my sin. Well, they, I don't know that they actually think that. They just don't believe what you're saying. Yeah. Duh. But they don't believe it because they don't, they don't want to. Well, well and the reason they don't want to is that the they, Spirit hasn't nudged them. They don't have the background to do it. And I can tell you when they say well, Romans 1 tells us everybody has the background. It doesn't matter Why what not? you believe as long as you're sincere. <laughs> but it also says that the Spirit has to move you. You can't come to God or Jesus or any of that with, a rash, with what we would call a rational thought process because it's not rational. That God is not willing that any should perish. I understand that, but he also doesn't call everybody, I don't think, either. Uh, and there's ample scripture for both sides. Uh, but you're not going to come to the Lord unless you are called by the Spirit. I agree that salvation is totally and completely a God thing. You bet you. Right? You bet you. And if, if God hadn't got me by the scuffle of the neck and said, pay attention. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Well, I wouldn't be here to death. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just wouldn't. I mean, I walked away from And as Jerry was pointing years. out, you know, I had a background from my mother and my grandmother, mm -hmm. right? And she'd march us off to church when I'm a little bitty boy. Yep. We walked a mile and a half to church on Sunday. 
you know. And when I was a teenager and everybody else quit going, my grandmother's like, you're driving me to church. <laughs> my mother was an influence. Well, and I had a grandfather who was an itinerant preacher uh, that I got to hear a couple of times. And But my mother, and even my father, who as far as I know only went to church one time, never entered the building again after that because of the response and the shock treatment that he received. He knew all these people. For 40 years, he knew what they were like. And, uh, but he, uh, we could not, I could not, my sister could weasel out, but I could not get out of it. Somebody's thumping the table. He's sending Morse code. <laughs> but, you know, and uh, my dad, I even asked my dad once, and he says, You just go ask your mother, and by the way, don't ever ask me that question again. Uh, on Sundays, Wednesdays, vacation Bible, any function that was going on, she uh, she ruled on that. <laughs> so I didn't. And I respected my dad for that, because that's normally not what occurs. And the other side, I asked her one time when she was older, I said, <clears throat> Do you still pray for me? She goes, Every single time. Yeah. And I will do that until my last breath is taken. Well, we we have a tendency to, you know, to like the things to be the way we want them to be. Oh, yeah. And when presented with something different, the first thing we do is put up our defense mm -hmm. wall to argue against it. Yeah. You know, so even if, even if it's something as profound... <laughs> As the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know. So you think you can win a political argument? You can't. You can't even get them to, to accept something you know as meaningful to them, you know, as the gospel. Eternal. God's offering you eternal salvation. You don't have to go to hell. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. Or they'll say, Well, I don't believe in hell anyway. <laughs> And here are these people, you know, they, they've, they've seen this absolute profound evidence that the God of Israel is in control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're like, send him away. <laughs> <laughs> what have they seen that shows that? What are you talking about? They all got everywhere, everywhere the ark went, the God of Israel, mm -hmm. right? They, they all got sick. And they were dying. And so they moved it to, they went to three different cities. And then they're like, get it out of here. Yeah. Right? We, you know, we cannot handle the God of Israel. And apparently its reputation preceded it. <laughs> you know, they didn't think to, to say, what if we worship the God of Israel? Yeah. All they said was, get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? It's making us sick and killing us. Mm-hmm. Why would I want to believe in something that's making me sick? And me? <laughs> well, they realize it's the God of Israel, right? Yeah. And so the concept of accepting the God of Israel instead of their fake God, uh -huh. <laughs> right, was just too foreign to them. Right. So they're just like, get rid of it. Now in chapter 6, now the ark of the Lord had been in the country of the Philistines seven months. Took them a little while, <laughs> right? And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners. They didn't call on God. They didn't call on the, any of the priests in, in Israel, right? Mm. The priest of Dagon, who is headless, <laughs> right? And has no hands. <laughs> and no hands, no hands. right? And he's half fish. And they're saying, what shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we shall send it to its place. And they said, if you send it away, <clears throat> right? If you send away the ark of God of Israel and do not send it empty, you shall surely return to him a guilt offering. Okay. You know, their, their superstitions were that if you're going to send it away, you've got to send it away with bounty, <laughs> you know? this guilt offering and then you shall be healed and it shall be known to you why his hand is not removed from you you 
You think God was actually mad at the Philistines? Uh, well, he used them. Sure. He, he used the Philistines to punish the Israelites mm -hmm. for their unbelief. Right. Right? <clears throat> now, we know that in the case of Babylon, right, he used Babylon to conquer Israel much later. But then he said, you guys went too far, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to wipe you out. <laughs> Right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> but all, what we know here is that they just took the, the Ark of the Covenant and put it in the temple with Dagon, like he was some false god. Mm -hmm. No respect for actually who the God of Israel really is. There's only one God, <laughs> everything else is just phony baloney stuff. You know, Allah, Buddha, you name it, you know. They all did. <clears throat> There's they, one God. They thought the real God was their God. Mm -hmm. They found out it's not the case. Well, so they got rid of the, uh, <laughs> the interference. How'd they put Dagon's head back on? <laughs> I guess they didn't. They never went back into that temple, according to the word of the Lord. <laughs> right? Anyway. Interesting. So they said in verse 4, What shall be the guilt offering which we shall return to him? And they said, Five golden tumors. So they had to make tumors out of gold to represent the tumors of the sickness, right? Mm. And five golden mice. And that's why we think maybe this was bubonic plague, that the mice were spreading the disease like it did in Europe. Mm -hmm. right? According to the numbers of the lords of the Philistines. Remember, they had five cities. So we needed five, one for each city, right? <clears throat> for one plague on all, <clears throat> on all of you and on your lords. <laughs> so they send him back, right? With the five golden tumors and the five golden mice. <laughs> Seems weird. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe they had to cut the tumors off and then gold plate them. <laughs> <coughs> maybe, who knows? It, just, it does seem kind of strange yeah. to us. When I was growing up, we had an iron problem in our water. We didn't have enough. And so the whole town, kids, adults, and we broke out in tumors. Uh, and those babies were no fun. <laughs> mm. If that caused death, finally they found it out. I mean, people would have them everywhere. People would have one to, I mean, multiple ones in their mouth, out of their mouth. Oh, oh it's sickening. And I had about four that I can remember, starting back here. One there, one there, one there. In verse 5, So you shall make likenesses of your tumors and likenesses of your mice, <clears throat> that ravage the land, and you shall give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will ease his hand from you, your gods, and your land. Why then do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts? When he had severely dealt with them, they did not allow the people to go, and they departed. Pharaoh thought he could hang on to the Israelites in Egypt, now, how long ago was that? Probably 50. Maybe 1,000 years. 400 years. Oh, 400 years. You were close. Yeah. Now, this is the Philistines. Okay. They know the history of Israel. Yes, sir. 400 years ago. The story of God bringing the Israelites out of Egypt was common knowledge. And yet they still wanted to fight him. Because we know more about it than they did. So we know how to do it. <laughs> it's amazing to me um, that men want to go to war 
against God. And then you think about what do we do when we decide to commit a sin? War against God. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And we think, well, we this is not a big deal. God's not going to hammer me too bad for this one. <laughs> you know, Everybody's how do we it. we justify doing stuff, mm-hmm. right? And then you're like, man, am I dumb. <laughs> Yeah, when you start looking at all the the sins of people that are, if they are active when they die, they're going to hell. I mean, Paul just names them, you know. It, this, this, it this. just, it is amazing that we... Oh, yeah. I mean, we who actually know, mm-hmm. we who have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and still succumb to the flesh... And do things that, you know, or at least think things that we shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Speaking for myself, right? I, I shouldn't have had that thought. Able, I had an easy excuse. It's pretty much probably what the rest of the world is at. I wanted to be responsible for my own decisions. Period. Now, I didn't say I wanted to be responsible for the consequences of any <laughs> sins. Uh, but I wanted to be able to do what I wanted when I wanted it and how I wanted it. And pretty much after, well, somewhat before, but especially after my father was killed, well, I turned into a loose cannon out there. Because he was the only one that, on this earth that I truly feared. I mean, that's all my mother had to say. Wait till your, mother, wait till your father gets home. We'll see how funny it was. Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> but that's true. That's pretty much people want to do what they want to do when they want to do it, and they don't think about the consequences of those actions. Could have cared less. Right? Right. And here we have this whole group of people doing the same thing. So they created a cart, and they put these two cows on it, right? And sent it back, and the, cow, the darn thing just took off. Towards Israel. Mm-hmm. Had to be two milk cows. Oh, I was going to ask you what milch, what milch, <laughs> milch cows. cows. I didn't look that up. I don't know what a milch cow is. Do you? Yeah, it's just a milk cow. Milk cow? That is a, a milch is a milk cow. One that has a calf. Oh, yeah, because they used the calf to, to right? It. Yeah, because the, the, the cows cow. wanted, yeah. wanted cow the calves to, to get the milk, uh-huh. right? And so they would follow the calves, but... The darn thing just took off towards Israel yeah. anyway. Had no yokes on it. To show that it was doing what God did mm-hmm. because it usually that kind of a cow no one labor cow. Mm-hmm. Right. So anyway, it heads back to Israel. And what he said, and they put the ark of the covenant on his cart. Again, who picked it up? There was only certain yeah. people that were supposed to touch that. Thing. Only the Levites only could. Only the Levites. And they could only handle the poles. Uh-huh. Well, the rest of this chapter, not a court, not really in our lesson, but that's okay, right? The cows took a straight path in verse 12 in the direction of Beth Shemesh, and they went along the highway. Lowing as they went and did not turn aside to the right or the left, and the lords of Philistine followed them to the border of Beth Shemesh. And the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping the wheat harvest in the valley. When they raised their eyes and saw the ark, were glad to see it, and the cart came into the field of Joshua, the Beth Shemite, and stood there where there was a large stone, and they split the wood of the cart and and offered the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. And the Levites took down the ark of the Lord and the box that was with it, in which the articles of gold, and put them on a large stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrifices you know, that day to the Lord. And when the five lords of the Philistines saw it, they returned to Ekron that day. And there were... Golden tumors, which the Philistines returned for the guilt offering of the Lord, one for Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkelon, and Goth, and Ekron, and the golden mice, according to the number of the cities of the Philistines belonging to the five lords. 
both <coughs> of fortified cities and country villages. The large stone which was set on the ark of the Lord is a witness to this day in the field of Joshua at Beth Shemesh. And he struck down some of the men of Beth Shemesh because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. And he struck down of all the people 50,070 men. Which and chapter? Verse 19, uh, chapter 6. Oh, thank you. And the people mourned because the Lord had struck the people with a great slaughter. Hmm. Who should have known you don't look into the ark? You don't touch the ark. They themselves should have known. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Jews should yeah. they knew he didn't hold the <clears throat> the Philistines accountable for the touching of the ark right mm -hmm. but he held them accountable for hanging on to the ark mm -hmm. didn't belong there so he wiped out a bunch of them with the disease and whatnot. Mm -hmm. but when he gets back to Israel and these people decide oh I can look in there God said, wait a cotton picking minute. <laughs> this is holy. <laughs> you definitely should have known better. They had Levites there, right? The Levites that yes, took it off the cart and whatnot. Okay? And the men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before the Lord? You know, this holy God, and to whom shall he go up from us? And they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kirith Jerim, saying, The Philistines have brought this. <clears throat> brought back the ark of the Lord, come down and take it <laughs> up to you. Mm. So, back to the point we were making earlier about how we react to things. We who know better are more accountable to God than those who don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. Exactly. The Bible says to him and knows to do good and do it not to him and his sin. So. It also says he who chooses the role, you know, take on the responsibility of the teacher is more accountable. Absolutely. <laughs> right? yeah. So if we fail, it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we'll We're just look back several years ago how we lived and uh, now. How many stores were open on Sunday, you know, obey the Sabbath. And look today, do we obey the Sabbath like they... <coughs> who made that decision that it's okay to do that now? City Council, Wall Street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all about the money. That's where, you know, you got to give Chick-fil-A credit. They still close yeah. on Sundays. <laughs> You know, they don't have a, a courthouse isn't open. Uh-uh. Don't have what? Courthouse isn't open on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You can't buy cars or anything that requires a license on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Can't Where, buy liquor? Yeah. Where's that? <laughs> Here yeah. in Oklahoma. Oh, you mean certain laws, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all car dealers are closed. Yeah. They, they so far. They open and you, and you can come in and look at the car. But you can't buy it. But you can't buy it. Mm -hmm. They won't sell it. They'll have a pre look sale. We used to do that. Yeah. Put all the information out there and you take it and call it the next day. For <coughs> but it was that way when we moved to Lubbock in 1985. We shopped us. Nothing. The only thing that was open on Sunday were the was the movie theater. And that was it. Drive in. I had an uncle that was yeah, on the end, but that was a good guy. For sale. He was getting a trunk. There were three different pharmacy stores in for sale, and they alternated between who was going to be on the And when we moved to New York, and this really shocked. Well, we didn't. We moved to New Jersey, but when we went to New York on a Sunday, we wanted to go to uh, out Statue of Liberty. Well, you could you could go out there, but you couldn't see nothing. You couldn't access anything. They basically just had people there. But inside New York City itself, 
all blue laws. They were not allowed to be open on Sundays. And that would shift people out of New York to New Jersey, northern New Jersey, to the mall. And you never, ever wanted to go out there on Sunday. We did it one time. And it was horrible. But they did that. Just blew my mind. Anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> any any last minute comments or questions? We're a simple world, and we've been in a simple world since Adam and Eve made their decision, and that is not going to change on our own. It will only change uh, permanently when the Lord comes for us and calls us. You ever want?